Well, hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. Um, after talking a little bit this morning with a few people, um, I've decided to change the uh, format a little bit. So it'll be less about coding and more about what we're doing and how it brings value to the enterprise. Uh, so my name is Richard Catano, and I'm uh, originally from California, but recent, well, about five years ago, moved to Paris, France. And so Stratum is a French company, and this is uh, our first time here back in North America. So we're happy to talk to all of you about it, about what we're doing. Um, so who, who here is, is looking into or working with blockchain technology? Yeah, quite a bit. And does anyone have a, a, a current POC or a prototype that they're working on? Is it, yeah, that's great. OK. Yeah, so as you know, a lot of people are talking about smart contracts and distributed ledgers and, and these kinds of uh, use cases for the blockchain. Uh, what we're doing is a little bit different. Uh, we're looking at it from, uh, well, one, we're focused heavily on enterprise. And we're not really looking at um, like decentralized apps and those kinds of ideas. We're looking at more like what can, what can blockchain technology do for the enterprise today? And we're looking at workflows and we're looking at how to bring those two together. And like I, in our, present, our presentations mentioned, uh, we are securing workflows. And so just a quick overview of what we'll be talking about. Uh, specifically, the blockchain feature that we're going to leverage today is the, the proof of existence. And this is the ability to prove the existence of data in time. And we're going to talk about a little bit about hardware wallets and how we're using that to sign documents and pieces of data. And finally, we'll talk a bit about Chainscript, this open specification that we've been working on, and, uh, and what is objective evidence and how does that work together. So, uh, so I just want to talk a little bit about the blockchain anatomy to kind of get our minds in the, in the set uh, to, to kind of pick up what we're going to uh, present. Uh, so the three main elements that I like to present when talking about blockchain is one, the, the actual blockchain data structure. And as you can see in this diagram here, the blockchain is, is essentially uh, a chain of blocks with a cryptographic hash linking the blocks in a way that those blocks cannot be separated. Um, and also these blocks can fork so that we can have different scenarios or different use cases. And second, uh, we have transactions that can go into the block. Um, in most cases, uh, with Bitcoin and Ethereum, these are ledger entries and contracts. But we're going to talk about putting hashes, which are essentially fingerprints of data, into the block. And then finally, the most important part of this, this anatomy here is the consensus model. And this is what wraps the data structure and the transactions. And this is what provides the confirmations and validation of the, the blockchain and its transactions. And um, you know, everyone knows Bitcoin uh, operates on what's called proof of work. And this is a distributed kind of consensus model where miners can join and leave the network and have incentive to protect it. Or we can do things with a permission model where you have a custodian who owns the blockchain and the custodian permissions nodes to do certain things like validate and confirm transactions or to uh, broadcast uh, transactions. We're going to be talking about proof of work in the sense of Bitcoin. Um, and so Proof of existence is simply put, the ability to objectively prove the existence of data and time, as it's written. And uh, the way that we do that is we have the blockchain on the left, and we insert a transaction into the blockchain, and we put a piece of, we put a hash that represents data in that transaction. And that's, that's our timestamp, so that's kind of our peg. And with this peg, we can say, okay, if we have the original data, if we have the hash of that data, and we have the transaction that contains that hash, with these three elements, we can say, uh, well, this piece of data existed at this moment in time in this particular uh, configuration. And so what we've done at Stratum is we built an entire engine on top of this concept called proof of existence. And what we're able to do is we're able to put a very large number of hashes or fingerprints into one Bitcoin transaction. And the way that we do that is through a a uh, cryptographic data structure called a Merkle tree, which is used commonly within the blockchain technology. And essentially, down on the bottom is, would be the L1234 would represent end-user data. And we would take the hash of that data, and we would put this into a tree. And then we would take a concatenation of the two hashes, left to right, and produce a parent hash. And then we would take the parents, left to right, and produce the top hash. And so by doing this, we have, a, we have a, a path between our data and the top hash. 
And this is how, this is a, what we call a Merkle path in our, in our system. And this is one of the elements that we can use to connect a Bitcoin transaction with a single set of data. And so what we return to the developer is what we call objective evidence. And it looks like this. It's in this format. And remembering the data structure just before, uh, the top link hash in yellow, starting with 9 uh, D511, this is a hash of your data. And then the next part is the Merkle path. And so in this case, that's the left side. And then we have an unknown right side, which produces the parent in green, 9370. And then that parent produces the left of the next level up with the right, which we don't know. We don't really care. But we have a new parent, 9D4F. And the 9D4F, since that's the top hash, this becomes the Merkle root. So we have the Merkle root, and we have a path down to our data. This is provided in JSON format. And then the final piece of this is the actual Bitcoin transaction. So on the bottom, we have a transaction. In this case, it's a Bitcoin testnet, but it could be Ethereum, or it could be the public, or it could be some permission blockchain. And in this case, we have a transaction ID. And if we were to do a search for this transaction on a block explorer, so just to note, our Merkle root is 9D4F. So if I pull this up, I should be able to see. So this is block cipher. They're just a, a blockchain explorer, and there's many of them. And in this case, we have a Bitcoin testnet transaction, which is a 4A7. And then down here, we have some data that was embedded. And this is the, the hash that was embedded. So with those three pieces of information, which is the, the, the original data set with its hash, the Merkle path, and the Bitcoin transaction, we can prove the existence of data in time. And so our engine produces, um, our engine's able to produce this objective proof for any amounts of data. And the next step above that is we secure workflows um, using that engine and something called ChainScript. And so ChainScript is an open specification that we have been working on and refining over time. But essentially it's a JSON format that allows a developer to describe a business process or workflow. And so if you think of a workflow as a series of states and state transitions, uh, ChainScript is, a, is able to describe each state and state transition with a cryptographic link back to the previous state so that when we have a full workflow, we cannot cut or modify anything in between. Additionally, we provide proof of work, that objective evidence that I just showed, for each state transition. So with this put together, we're able to secure workflow objectively without... Uh, having to rely on any third party, relying on Stratum, relying on any other vendor. Simply just need the blockchain, it's Bitcoin transaction, the Merkle path, and the, uh, the, the hash of your data. So uh, this is just a quick snippet of code describing or showing change script. And in this case, we have two states, one on top and one on bottom. And I've abbreviated the state. So this is where your user data would go, and you could put whatever you want in it. We don't store your data. We just, we just take what you give us and we return objective proof. And as you can see, the link hash, which is a hash of your state, is 54D8. And then the next state here, which is, the state's also abbreviated, we could have another hash here. So something has changed. But we also include the previous link hash to the previous state. And so that way we can, our, our state transitions are also cryptographically linked. Uh, another component to this is uh, digital signing. So the, one of the most um, important parts of dealing with workflow is the human-to-machine interaction point. And uh, I wanted to just to show uh, a hardware wallet. This is from Ledger. And uh, Ledger is one of our investors and uh, partners. And they create these Bitcoin hardware wallets. And they're just USB hardware wallets that you can plug in to your computer. And these wallets are able to generate uh, an unlimited amount of Bitcoin addresses. And so I can receive a Bitcoin on one of these, or uh, Ethereum, or whatever you can figure it for. And uh, what we've done is we've actually integrated this technology with the Stratum technology. So uh, a user can sign uh, a state transition with a hardware wallet. And this becomes very useful in some use cases here. And so what we're doing in Paris, we're working with some banks and we're working with some legal uh, law firms and we're working with um, uh, some healthcare institutions. And I, I, find that one to be, I find it to be one of the more interesting use cases. And so uh, I listed here pharmaceutical research. Um, we delivered a POC 
for a hospital in Paris who does clinical trials research. And so if you can imagine a pharmaceutical company has a new drug and they would like to test this drug, the process of testing the drug involves recruiting patients, uh, laying out a protocol of how to take the drug, the doses and the intervals, and then also which symptoms to record and how to record them. And typically this is done by paper or on spreadsheets and it's kind of messy. And as you know that uh, you might want to modify the data or keep, it, uh, keep uh, certain sets of data or remove other sets to make your test results look better. Well, this is a big problem in clinical, trial, clinical research. So what we've done is we created, um, we've uh, in, converted one of their clinical trials protocols into a chain script. And we're able to record the signing of a patient's consent with a hardware key. We're able to record in number of uh, patients and each dose and the symptoms that they've recorded with chain script. And we're able to create a set of of objective evidence to support the data that's shared. So the pharmaceutical company does some research, they do the trial, they produce data, and then they can also produce the objective evidence that goes with it. And when this is shared with the scientist or the other doctor or another uh, pharmaceutical lab, a research lab, they can use that objective evidence to support the data that they're sharing. And additionally, if they share, they continue to share the data, it can be trusted down the line. And so, in the same respect, uh, we're also looking at KYC, know your customer, and how to remove the friction points of a custom, uh, onboarding a customer. And I think, oh, I think I have three minutes left. But there we go. And uh, being able to um, meet compliance. And in Paris, we're talking at very high levels. We're talking with government, we're talking with lawyers, we're talking with banks. And, uh, more and more, they're starting to open up. Uh, we believe that like regulators would really like this kind of objective evidence um, to help better meet compliance requirements. And um, yeah, so I would like to, I, I'm really interested in talking to see uh, what you guys are up to. Please come by the, the booth and uh, maybe give you a demo or discuss it in further. And uh, thank you very much for having me.